Hi, my name is Aaron, and this is my show, Reeducation. And what is war? Dun dun. Dun dun, what is it good for? I would say giving the military industrial complex more money. Now, the problem with going to war is just like everything else under neoliberal capitalism, it has become commodified. It's been turned into something that we make ever increasing quarterly profits on. So, whenever we go to war, we're inevitably making money off of people suffering and dying. It's kind of part and parcel to the whole game. Now, the thing about war and the military-industrial complex, is that it is a massive employer in the United States. Not only is it extremely lucrative for companies going to war to produce the bombs, the tanks, the drones, the military planes, and the ships that are involved in waging war, not only is it extremely lucrative to build those things, it's also extremely lucrative to go into those countries that you're waging war with, And, of course, steal their land, steal their property, steal their goods and their resources. It's an interesting game because back in the day, many years ago, they used to lie to people through the news and through the media and through state addresses and say that they needed to go to war for specific reasons. They would convince the public that some dictator or some guy was really, really bad and they would have to go topple him. And it's not like we don't still do that. I mean, that's exactly what happened in Libya, Somalia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Panama, and now possibly happening in Venezuela. But it's not really a thing that we need to talk about a whole lot anymore. It's not something that you necessarily need to convince the public on. Because the public doesn't really pay attention to those things anymore. And it's not because they wouldn't want to. It's because the mass media the state-run mass media happens to just not project that on the screen. They rarely talk about us going to war, and when they do, they only ever portray it in a manner as though it was glorious, as though it was a great thing. Amazing bombs going through the sky and quoting Leonard Cohen like they did on, I believe, CNN. They show the bombs launching, and they might show the explosion once in a while, but they don't show the absolute pandemonium and decimation and human lives lost that happen when those bombs explode. Remember, most of the time, whenever we're talking about these signature strikes and all of these drone strikes, we're not talking about actual combat insurgents getting destroyed. We're talking about innocent women and children and just bystanders who happen to be close by getting completely slaughtered. War is not something you should be making into a goddamn business. It's something that you should do as a last resort. You see, I don't have a solution for the United States and its military-industrial complex. As far as I'm concerned, just like Rome, it has spread itself so thin militarily that it is eventually going to end up collapsing in on itself. But what I could say is that in an idyllic society, you wouldn't have a standing offensive military. I understand having a defensive force, making sure that the homeland is secure and that you don't have invaders or people trying to destroy you. But having an offensive military, just standing and waiting to go out and serve, seems like a bad idea. It seems like that could incentivize us going to war. When we are talking about the military, we're talking about an unjustified hierarchy. At the very top, you have the commander-in-chief, who right now is a business person who has zero fucking idea of anything militarily. Of course, I'm not saying that the generals are necessarily the best people to have in a position of power in that industry either. I mean, just like every other elite under neoliberal capitalism, they're bought and paid for by big business. They're inevitably going to make decisions on behalf of capital. So, the best solution would be an anarcho-communist one. Obviously. Anarcho, the abolishment of all unnecessary hierarchies, and communist, the worker control and ownership of the means of production. Now, under this system, the leadership would be voted upon by the soldiers. The best soldiers, the best strategists, strategists? Strategists? There we go. The best strategists, the best people at their jobs would become generals. You know, very similar to the way that they do now. The only difference is they wouldn't be influenced by capital. They would be influenced by doing the best job possible 
or else the people under them would vote them out. And it would happen pretty quickly because as soon as people start dying under somebody else's command, they tend to not like that person pretty quickly. A lot of people think that there's a problem with structuring the military uh, in an anarchist fashion um, because you need to have a supreme leader at the top or else you're not going to have order. And I would say that that is obviously false. You don't follow somebody because they are powerful or a supreme leader. You don't always follow somebody because you're afraid of them, because they have more power than you. You can also follow them out of respect, out of the knowledge that you know that they are better at their job. Fighting on a team, being organized, and having a structure does not go against anarchism. It is anarchism. We just structure our teams the proper way, from the bottom up instead of from the top down. At least that's the way I look at it. My name is Aaron. This is my show, Reeducation. Thanks for watching.